TKR Cable Channel 6 Sports presents Central New Jersey High School Football. This afternoon, the Central Jersey Group 4 State Championship game from Old Bridge. It's the number one ranked and top seeded Madison Central Spartans taking on the Middletown South Eagles who are second seeded in the Central Jersey Group 4 playoff bracket. Hello again, everyone. Luke Rogno joined by Scott Rakosny on an absolutely beautiful December afternoon for this state championship game. Sunny skies and the temperature in the mid-40s. It is a bit windy, as you can tell by looking at our hair blowing around, but it is a perfect day for football here in early December. Madison Central, 10-0 and on the season. The Spartans, winners of 17 straight football games dating back to last year. They are gunning for their second straight Central New Jersey Group 4 state title. Middletown South, a good football team in their own right. The Eagles are 9-1, and and they feature one of the best defensive teams to come out of the Shore area in quite some time, Scott. Yes, Middletown South, as you said, comes in with a record of nine wins and one loss, only averaging giving up six points per game, which is very good, and they're going to have to play some good defense today against Madison Central. One of the things to talk about with that Middletown South defense, yes, it's good, it's hard hitting, but they have not faced a wishbone team all year. What do they have to do to be successful against the bone? Well, they have to be very disciplined, of course. They, their ends have to take the pitch man, or rather the cornerbacks. The ends take the quarterback, and the tackle will have to take the dive back. So they have to play very disciplined defense, and we'll see if practice paid off this week defending the bone. Middletown South also can score some points. They have some very capable offensive players, and they start off with quarterback Jeff Quazo, but they can do a lot more than pass. Yes, they're about a 50-50 team. They can pass the ball and run it. And when they run the ball, they go to a young man named Stephen Pitts. He's only a sophomore, but he's a good one. He'll get the ball a lot when they run the football, and Quazo passing for around 54%. Middletown South's last playoff appearance was in 1986 against J.P. Stevens, so they're looking for a return to glory here today. But it'll be a tough road. Madison Central at 10-0, and and there aren't too many teams on the high school level who run the wishbone offense better than the Spartans. And when you talk about running the wishbone, you have to start with a quarterback, and there's none better than Ed Walsh. He is a magician with the football, and he really makes that offense go. Ed Walsh, 5'11", 175 pounds, knows how to run it. He's been running quarterback for the last two years. They're on a 17-game winning streak. Ed Walsh really knows how to read the defense as well with the bone. And he has some help uh, with him in the backfield. Three good backs, Bowden, Nugent, and Angelusi. Defensively, Madison Central also very sharp. And when you take a look at their big defensive line, you start with Stanovich and Barry, also Stephen Hamilton. Uh, they can do it on defense as well, a smothering type defense. Yes, their defense... Defensive line puts a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Therefore, the defensive backs had a lot of have a lot of interceptions, and that's what they're going to have to do. Keep the pressure on Quazo today. All right, just moments away from kickoff. Should be a good one. Middletown South, 9-1 against undefeated Madison Central for the Central Jersey Group 4 State Championship. We'll be back in just a few moments. Welcome back to Vince Lombardi Field in Old Bridge, the Middletown South Eagles and the Madison Central Spartan Central Jersey Group 4 State Championship game. There's the captains at midfield for Madison Central. Stanovich, Nugent, uh, Calavito, and Walsh for the Spartans in their home blue uniforms. Trimmed with dark blue, Chris Citarella out there for Middletown South, number 59, and a couple of other captains as well. Can't see their numbers, but... Look to be uh, Ron Amak as well for the Eagles. Let's take a look at how these teams got to this championship game. Group 4 playoff results. You see Madison Central, their second meeting of the year against East Brunswick, and they defeated the Bears rather easily, 31-7, although not as easily as the first time around, 55-3. For Middletown South, the Eagles, a club that really just got by in the first round, winning in the fourth quarter, coming up with a 7-6 victory against Manalapan. Madison Central, as you see, has won the toss, 
and the Spartans. There's a look at Middletown South over Manalapan by the score of 7-6, to six, and the Eagles winning that in the fourth quarter with a drive with about four minutes remaining. They played a real good defensive game. They only gave up around 59 yards on that against Manalapan. There you see it, Middle, uh, Middletown South will kick, and Madison Central will receive here. We'll take, make note that the field is in pretty good condition. Two days ago, this field was a sloppy mess, and right now, Talking to Coach DeMarco before the game, they use this stuff called Diamond Dry. As you see in the middle, it's a lighter color like a sand. They got this from Rutgers, and the field, he said, is in excellent shape. The ground crew has done an outstanding job getting the field ready. There was talk that this game would be played at Rutgers Stadium earlier in the week. They were anticipating some rain on Thursday. The rain never did come, and as a result, uh, because of other circumstances as well, uh, this game was Scheduled to be played here at Madison, and so here we are. But the field, as Scott mentioned, is in fairly good shape considering the way it was early in the week. All right, Middletown South in their white uniforms with blue numerals, trimmed with gray or silver, if you will. Madison Central, the powder blue and the dark blue. And the Spartans will be moving left to right on your screen as Middletown South kicks off to Madison Central. Brian Donnelly is back deep for the Spartans. He stands inside the 10-yard line. And Nugent, and it looks to be Mike Bowden as well, Back for Madison Central. And indeed it is. Mike Donnelly this year had a touchdown on a kickoff return, 77 yards. The kickoff will come to Donnelly. He's at the 10 to the 20. And he's brought down. No, he's still on his feet, then finally brought down across the 25 yard line to the 27. And the Madison Central Spartans will go on offense first. Let's take a look at the Spartans on offense. Up front, Mike Arbzani. He's the center. The guards are Scheffler and Tunla. McNara, McNamara, excuse me, Connolly are the tackles. Brian Donnelly, the split end. Stanovich, the big tight end. Ed Walsh is the quarterback. And in the wishbone backfield behind him, Angelusi, Bowden, and Nugent. First and 10, Madison Central. Mark the ball at the 27. Seems to be a little bit of a problem on the snap and penalty markers on the play, so kind of a sloppy beginning for Madison Central. Middletown South defensively. Up front, they'll go with Jason Suss. He's an excellent nose guard. Dan Murray and Dave Johnson are the tackles. Cuchilla and you saw Citarella, the defensive ends. Decker, Little, and Bova, the linebackers. Cortelli and Byrne, the corners, and Robert Pitts, the safety. There was motion against Madison Central, so the penalty's on them. Moves them back five yards. Will be first down and 15 yards to go. Ball resting on about the 24-yard line of Madison. Spartans averaging 36 points per game offensively. Walsh keeps the football. Pitches wide. Bowden met behind the backfield and then spins for some good yardage. He may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. The Eagles play it very well. Coming up to make the original hit, Chris Citarella. As we take a look at the replay, you'll see that uh, Middletown South is doing what they're supposed to be. See, somebody is on the pitch man. Here you see a beautiful hit by number 40, and that's Citarella. He came up from his cornerback position. Check that. That's uh, Tom Byrne making the tackle, and he did a great job. Everybody was covered there, and only a gain of a few. Second and 10. Walsh to throw. Has a receiver. It's intercepted. Joe Quitelli picks it off for the Eagles. And Middletown South will have outstanding field position. First turnover of the game. Little uncharacteristic for Middletown South. They've only thrown, uh, rather for Madison Central, they've only thrown the ball 12 times this year. All right, the Middletown South offense. And we'll take a look at the Eagles on offense as they have a first down. Well, perhaps after this play, we'll take a look at that Middletown South offense. First and 10 for the Eagles. Out of the I formation, Jeff Quazzo is the Middletown South quarterback. Gives to the second man through and looking for some running room and getting about three or four is Stephen Pitts, the tailback, 930 yards coming in, only a sophomore. All right, that Middletown South offense up front. Noah Rudolph is the center and a good one. Citarella and Onmack are the guards. Shut Smith and Trezor will shuffle the plays a tackle. Gustafson and Marrero, the flankers. The ends, John Jones and Mascarello. Mascarello will bring the plays in. Marcus Quazzo and Pitts in the backfield. 
As we come back, not a lot of yardage there. Second down, actually a third down coming up. Third down and seven for Middletown South. South will give you on offense the look of the eye formation, a multiple offense. They'll use a lot of motions. Occasionally, they will go with the twins. Madison Central defensively. Kramer, Santora, Keith Berry, an excellent player. Stanovich up front and Hamilton. Vislaki, Palavino, Walsh, Bowden, Donnelly, and Nugent. The linebackers and the defensive backfield. Third down, seven. Jeff Quazzo. The quarterback, Marrera, goes in motion. A little bit of movement on the line. And a penalty flag. And the Middletown South side is a little upset with that. We'll see who it's against. And there seems to also be some extracurricular activity on the play. Tom Gustafson, the flanker, was in motion. And then a couple of the Spartans jumping across the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at the call. Offside, Madison Central. You see, Madison Central has committed only 11 turnovers in 88. One interception, 10 fumbles, but they have an interception already today. Make that two for the year. So you see a shot of Rob Stanovich, six foot three, 220 pound defensive end. And this is going to be a big one against Madison Central. Very uncharacteristic of a Bob DeMarco coach team. Not only did the Spartans jump offside, but a personal foul, unnecessary roughness against Madison Central. And that moves the ball all the way down to the 20 yard line. Actually, they mark it at the 21. Just underway first quarter. Nine minutes and 43 seconds remaining. No score. Middletown time South threatening. Central. That's their first timeout of the first half. And Bob DeMarco calls timeout for Madison Central. The Spartans take a timeout. And we will take one as well. A timeout on the field. The score, Madison Central nothing. Middletown South nothing. We're your TKR Cable Helping Hands, here to show you some important features of your cable guide. Premieres are listed in the front of your guide, highlighting the exciting new programming airing that month. For easy reference, your TKR guide has an index, which lists all the features by title in alphabetical order with a summary of each feature. Let's not forget the prime time grid, which lets you see the night's programming in a glance. So let your cable guide help you discover all the entertainment that TKR offers. First down and 10, Middletown South at the Madison Central 21-yard line. Jeff Quazzo, junior quarterback, 5'10", 165 pounds. And again, a penalty marker on the play. And it may be against Madison Central one more time. The go Middletown South is going on the long count, and of course, being early in the game, Madison Central is very aggressive, maybe too aggressive, and they're going to be penalized again. It will be offsides against Madison Central. Spartans really hurting themselves with penalties here on this initial drive by Middletown South. The ball is marked at the 16-yard line, and it's a first down and five for Middletown South. High formation for the Eagles. Now they split the backs behind Quazzo. This is Pitts, has a hole, and picks up about three or four before he's crunched at the line of scrimmage. Coming up to make the tackle, Nugent and Steve Carlovito, who leads the Spartans in tackles. And a good hole by the right side of the line for South, and there was a big hole. Pitts took advantage of it, gained a few. It'll be second down and about four yards for a first. Here see Pitts, 6.1 average, 11 touchdowns, 1,000 yards. He is only a sophomore. Keep that name in mind. I'm sure you'll be seeing it. Six foot, 185 pounds, has good size. And again, as Scott pointed out, an excellent point, only a sophomore. You're going to be hearing a lot of him. Second down, three. Up the middle, a huge hole and a first down ripped off by Eric Marcus, the fullback. Marcus is only a junior, 5'11", 175 pounds. Right up the middle, there was a hole once again. It will be first down. There you're going to see Marcus, 597 yards, 7.2 average, six touchdowns. So he's not a bad running back at all either. They mix it up real well, as we mentioned in the pregame. Madison Central has not given up a, excuse me, they've given up one rushing touchdown this year. And right now, Middletown South is knocking on the door. The Eagles have the football first and goal at the six. This is something Middletown, or rather Madison, is not accustomed to. The other team scoring first if they do. 
Here's Marcus, has a hole. Touchdown, Middletown South. So Middletown gets on the board first. That's just what they had to do to slow down the momentum of Madison Central. Chris O'Donnell is in to kick the extra point. For Middletown South, the Eagles strike first, six nothing. Snap is good, kick is up, and the kick is no good. That could be a factor later on. There's a break in the action at Bombardi Field in Old Bridge, eight minutes and 18 seconds remaining. First quarter, Middletown South six, Madison Central, nothing. Channel six, just for you, with the final score. There's more to sports than just the major leagues, and New Jersey teams offer lots of excitement. Get the insights into the sports and the people who play them on The Final Score. Why just read about local sports when you can experience it on The Final Score, your central New Jersey source for sports. Every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m., only on Channel 6, just for you. A little bit of a surprise early on here in the first quarter in Old Bridge. Middletown South taking the lead over Madison Central. Scott? A little bit of a surprise to me was the fact that Central, who threw the ball only 12 times this year, on about third down, threw the football. I remember what happened to New Brunswick when they tried to throw the football real early. We'll see what they do in the second possession. Middletown South taking advantage of a Madison Central turnover. Here is Mike Bowden trying to angle right. Takes it up the middle. And Bowden, with a nice bit of running, will give Madison Central a first down across the 30-yard line. Let's take a look again. Here is the touchdown. You're going to see it. Big hole left side. Give it to Marcus. A few arm tackles there. You can see all the Madison Central players were contained inside. They were blocked inside. There you see Marcus, the halfback, 5'11", 180-pound junior. The young team is Middletown South. Going against the more experienced central team. All right, here come the Spartans. Walsh gives up the middle. Nugent spins, no yardage. And the Eagles stack it up well defensively. Nose guard Jason Suss on the tackle along with Johnson and Murray. Pick so a yard, second and nine. So far, Middleton, Middletown South has done what they were supposed to, contain the option, keep the ball away from Walsh in that explosive offense of central. 7 and a half remaining first quarter. Madison Central, second down and nine. Walsh looking to keep taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Dan Murray, the defensive tackle, makes the penetration and the tackle. And the Eagles are doing an outstanding job so far containing the wishbone attack. Looked like a stun. It looked like either Albrack or Murray came in to make that stop. Beautiful job. Shooting the gap, tackling Walsh for a loss. It'll be third down and 12. Third down, 12. Ball to 28. Walsh looking to get outside. No one around. Now pitches to Nugent. Nugent tight looks up the sideline, and he'll be close. No, he'll be short, actually, of a Madison Central first down. He'll be well short. It'll be fourth down and about three. Nice play by Walsh, though. Nice play by Walsh. That was probably a pass because it was shoveled forward. Good penetration by the Eagles, and that allowed allowed the Eagles to get across, and uh, it'll be fourth down now and about four to go, and it looks like Madison will be punting the football. Keith Berry is in to kick. He's a 6'1", 210-pound senior, 18 punts on the year, not an outstanding average, 26.5. Hasn't had to punt a whole lot this year. And it's a high kick, but short. And we'll take a Madison Central bounce, and Middletown South will get the football in good field position. It'll be Eagles ball at the 36-yard line. This is something that Madison Central is not accustomed to. They do not let up too many points in the first quarter. And nope. right now they let up six. A score six nothing in favor of the Eagles from Middletown South. In fact, Madison Central defensively gives up only six points per game. So, 
Middletown South has reached that plateau already. Quazzo to throw, has a receiver and complete. Walsh comes over and lays a crunch on Mike Marrero, the split end. Marrero unable to get up the ladder and make the catch. Six foot, 175 pound senior. Marrero was open for a long time. Quazzo didn't look right away. All he did was a straight, like a butt hook pattern. Went about seven yards, turned around. A little quicker pass would have got it to completion. He was wide open. A little poorly thrown pass. Second down, 10. High formation for the Eagles. Here's the pitch to Pitt. And he fumbles out of bounds. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage and then fumbled the football out of bounds. So it will remain Middletown South possession. Good block left side on Steven Hamilton. But then Calavito came up to make a very strong hit. Popped the ball loose. The ball went out of bounds. It'll be third down and call it eight yards to go for a first. You see the Spartans, 15 interceptions and 19 fumble, fumble recoveries. And a lot of those interceptions come because of the big pressure put on by the defensive line. And they force turnovers. That's the name of the game for Madison Central. Big play here defensively for the Spartans. Third down and seven. You see a lot of movement on the offense of the Eagles. Two receivers split right. Quazzo to throw. Has time. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage and caught. Are they going to call that a catch? concentration by John Jones, the tight end. However, it will not be enough for a Middletown South first down. It is fourth down. Good heads up play by Jones. You hear the booing from the partisan crowd here. Good crowd on both sides, but Central didn't like that reception, but it's gonna be fourth down anyway. And going into punting formation is Jones. Jones will kick and back deep for Central. Donnelly and Walsh. Good snap. It's a poor kick, though, off the side of Jones' foot, and the Spartans will let it roll, and they'll have good field position. The ball will be marked at the 37, and Madison Central will go on offense for the third time in the first quarter. So far, the story has been the defensive line of Middletown South. They've been getting the penetration, being disciplined like, disciplined like we said they had to. Coming across the line, forcing Walsh to pitch the ball before he wants to. Spartans running out of the wishbone, first down 10. Walsh looks to pitch, now he'll turn it up, and he is crunched. And coming up to make the tackle, Jason Suss, number 57. Also Chuck Decker from his outside linebacker position. And the Middletown South Eagles playing the wishbone attack very well. John Little also doing a real good job. And on the left end, Chris Cer uh, Centarella did a fine job. Great penetration, got across the line made Walsh belly back a little bit. There you see it again, and a bunch of white jerseys there to make the stop. It'll be second down, and call it 10 and a half, 11 yards. Call it 11. Under five minutes remaining, first quarter. Walsh takes it again, this time off tackle, and not a lot of yardage, pick up a two or three. Dan Murray in on the tackle along with Chris Citarella. And now a third down and long coming up for the Spartans, and they have been forced into three third down and longs in this game. And again, that is not their game. This is something Madison Central, I said twice already, is not accustomed to. Their backs, Bowden and Nugent, are averaging around seven to eight yards a carry, and they're nowhere near that right here. Walsh keeps it himself, and he takes it upfield, but he'll be short again of first down yardage. Nailed by Murray. The defensive tackle, 185-pound junior, and the Spartans, who have punted just 18 times all year, will punt for the second time in the first quarter. This time they got the ball up the field a little bit, the ball resting on about the 47. There's Ed Walsh, 1,036 yards, 7.5 average, 25 touchdowns. Must also keep in mind he is only nine points away from the Middlesex County record for scoring held by John Henry Johnson last year. Berry with a pretty good kick this time. It's end over end and fumbled and still loose and picked up by Middletown South. Joe Critelli was back there and it got away from him. And then uh, the Spartans hopping on top of Critelli. That could have been a big turnover. It would have put the ball deep in uh, Middletown South's territory with Central having the football. 
Instead, it's still deep in their territory, and South takes over. A little bit of a bobble, picked it up, got a nice bounce, got to pick it up in time. So South takes over with the ball resting on about, call it the 20-yard line, 15. First and 10, Middletown South with a wide set. Quazo gives, and Marcus carries the football and powers ahead for about four as he's up near the 25. A little inside give, Eric Marcus. 5'11", 180 pounds, used his size and strength there to pick up a few extra yards. He was hit initially at the line, but drove for a few more. Picked up close to five yards on the play. Second down and call it six for Middletown South at the 25-yard line. Muscarello and Marrero are wide to the left side and the back split behind Jeff Quazzo, the quarterback. He gives the pits, who looks to go up the middle, and he's tripped up at the line of scrimmage, lunges forward to about the 26-yard line. Played well by the linebacker, Veslaki, and also uh, Calavito went on the hit number 40 up the middle, and Madison Central starting to settle down a little bit. If you take a look at the Madison Central uh, defensive line and the way they're set up, there's a big gap up the middle. Look for a pass inside right up the middle cutting across in between the linebackers and the backs. Third down, third and long. Third down, six. Quazo throws the pits behind the line of scrimmage. He dives forward, but I believe he'll be short of first down yardage. Played perfectly by the defensive end, Steve Hamilton. Left side, read the screen all the way, went right to the ball carrier and popped him. Fourth down to three, and Middletown South will punt. John Jones in to kick it away, and he had a, a poor kick his last time up off the side of his foot. Let's see if he gets pressured. See three men back there to block for Middletown. It looked like Middletown jumped on the left side. Penalty markers on the play. Stops the clock with one minute and 45 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. There you see a shot of Jones. He has real good size. He's a senior, 6'4", 215 pounder, and it is against Middletown South. That'll back him up five more yards. So a fourth down and eight coming up. You know, on a lot of teams with less experience than Central, they may get flustered by this slow start. But we have to remember, Central comes in here with a 17-game winning streak. This almost same team has been here last year. This time a much better punt. End over end, Donnelly calls for the fair catch and a wise move by Brian. As Madison Central gets very good field position at the 46-yard line. That's definitely the best field position the Spartans have had in the game. They punt it twice on two possessions. Madison Central has struggled on offense. They have yet to pick up a first down here in this game. There you see a shot of the great crowd. That's the Madison Central side. And there's a lot of other people here from all different schools, some schools that aren't as fortunate to be in the championship round. Big crowd on hand. Walsh to throw. Has a receiver looking for Donnelly. Donnelly makes the catch. And he's down inside the 10-yard line. Defense, 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 defense. And that's the pass we saw them throwing in practice. A beautiful pass right on the money. Donnelly timed it, took it right in stride, bobbled it a little bit, then picked it up. He has some good hands. Brian Donnelly, the split end 5'9", 165-pound junior. He also plays quarterback. Donnelly, eight receptions for 222 yards coming into the game with one touchdown. 27.8 average, so he's a big play receiver. Middletown South jumps offside and... Unless the Spartans drew them off, that'll push the Eagles half the distance back to the goal line. And that big play really pushed the momentum towards Central, and it is against Middletown South. Ball rests inside the five at the four-yard line. First and goal, Madison Central at the Middletown South four. One minute and seven seconds remaining. First quarter, and the Spartans looking to tie this game up, eventually take the lead. Walsh keeps, looks to take it in. Touchdown, Madison Central. Mark, mark down number 26 for Ed Walsh. That's 26 touchdowns on the year. There's a big hole left side if we could take another look at that. 
Somebody has to take the quarterback. He took it on the left side, off tackle hole. Saw the hole. As I said, he reads it real well. There you see him get into the end zone just about untouched. Ed Walsh, 5'11", 175-pound senior. A lot of schools looking at him. Donnelly, the kick, the extra point. The kick is up. The kick is good. Three seconds remaining, first quarter. Timeout on the field. Madison Central, seven. Middletown South, six. It's Bowl Week on the ESPN. The All-American Bowl featuring the Florida Gators against the Fighting Illini. The SeaWorld Holiday Bowl with Heisman Trophy winner Barry Sanders leading Oklahoma State against high-scoring WAC champion Wyoming. And the Mazda Gator Bowl, a showdown between Georgia and Michigan State in the only bowl game on New Year's Day. It's a bowl bonanza, live on ESPN. Madison Central has come back with a vengeance, and they do it in a very unfamiliar way to most of their fans. Through the air, Brian Donnelly making the catch, and he is a big play receiver, as we mentioned. He had a 68-yard touchdown reception against Edison earlier this year. Spartans have gained 3,086 3, yards rushing, seven-yard average, and uh, they get the four yards there for the touchdown. Donnelly will kick off. And back deep for Middletown South is Stephen Pitts, number 20. And Joe Cortella, number 13. It comes to Cortella. He's at the 10. Almost slipped down to the 20. And up and over the top. Brought down at the 32-yard line. That's an excellent return by Cortella. And Middletown South will have good field position. Cortella has some really good speed, as you can see right there. He's tough. He's got decent size. He's a senior, 5'10", 170-pounder, just got upended there. And there's not much time left in the first quarter. Matter of fact, there's about 45 seconds and counting down here in the first quarter. We have a real good game cooking up. Madison Central on top, 7-6. Middletown South, only one loss on the air. That loss coming to Tom's River South just by two points, 24-22. The handoff up the middle, and the Spartans would have no part of it stripping the ball was Stanovich. <laughs> Stanovich just yanked that ball right out of Marcus's hands, but they say, of course, that Eric Marcus was down. Stan Stanovich, a key performer, uh, both on offense and defense. Remember, in the, even last year, he was doing a heck of a job as a junior. He plays the pass real well, and he also plays the run excellent, so he's a real Real good defensive end. There he is right there, number 99. That's the end of the quarter, I think. That's the end of the first quarter. There he is. Stanovich. Stop Stanovich. And the end of the first quarter. Your score at the end of one. Madison Central, seven. Middletown South, six. Ladies and gentlemen, 50-50 tickets are available at the gate. 50-50 tickets to that plays in the short conference and they're called the Manawan Huskies and they may stake some, some claim to that uh, state championship trophy. Quazzo throws, intercepted! Donnelly picks it! And welcome back to Madison Central in Old Bridge. Spartans lead it by the score of 7-6. You see some of the Mattis, some Middle of the Madison Central South cheerleaders with the football. First down, excuse me, second down. Second down and nine. Quazzo to throw. Rolls out. Fires. It is incomplete. Donnelly really laying a hit on Mike Marrero. They could have thrown a flag on that. Did not. Yeah, we saw the good ability of Quazzo to run with the football. He's a straight drop back passer, and he's also a rollout quarterback. So he's really mobile back there, and that will cause problems for the defense of Madison Central. And they played it real well that time. Jeff Quazzo, the son of former NFL quarterback Gary Quazzo, who played for the Baltimore Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. It's in the blood. Jeff only a junior, 5'10", 165 pounds. Third down and eight. 
Quazzo gives on the delay. Marcus has good running room. He's got a first down as well. Penalty marker, though, on the play. And so we'll have to wait and see what the flag is. That could when, be called back. Yeah, when you see a penalty marker upfield like it was, it's usually a clip. Don't know for sure. We'll find out. But there was a big hole there, and Marcus showed his speed. Marcus did have enough for the first down. It's blocking below the waist. And that is against Middletown South. That'll back up the Eagles. Both teams, uh, a few penalties early on. Maybe it's the nerves, but that's something you can't do. You have to stay above the waist and in front of the player when making the block downfield. It brings up a third down and about nine yards to go for a first. Definitely could be a passing down or maybe another draw, which worked real effectively. But the ball's going to be moved back even more, so that'll be bring it back to about third down and 12 then. And you can see the block below the so knee. Third down. third down and 11 coming up for Middletown South. And Middletown South lost to J.P. Stevens back in 1986. That was their last playoff appearance. Also played Piscataway back in the early 80s. And yeah, we beat Scott Rakosny, a member of that Piscataway Chief team, so he knows Middletown South. Split backs behind Gary, excuse me, Jeff Quazzo. Jeff to throw. In trouble now. Let's it go. Has a receiver. It's a first down and much more for Middletown South. Tom Gustafson, the flanker, makes the tackle. 5'11", 175-pound junior, and Quazzo looked really good back in that pocket. You know what? He had a lot of time to look for his receiver. Gustafson, if we can take another look at it, fell down, got up once again. Here you're going to see it again. A lot of pressure. Fell down. Before that, got back up and got up the middle. Remember, I said that Madison Central has a little bit of a gap up the middle. That may be the place to go. It looked like Madison was into man-to-man -man coverage. First and 10, Middletown South in Madison Central territory at the 44-yard line. Marcus picks up two or three. Brought down on the far sideline by Keith Berry, also Chris Nugent and Calavito on the play. Pick up of a yard, second down and nine, ball marked at the 43 yard line. So you can see the arm of Quazzo coming in uh, with 52%, 705 yards, throwing the football through the air, eight TDs on the year. Middletown South does move the ball well on the ground. They have a good offensive line. Noah Rudolph, a three-year starter at center. 28 consecutive starts. That's durability, huh? Oh, yeah. And movement on the line. And this time, Madison Central might have jumped. Looks like Keith Berry might have crossed the line of scrimmage as he was looking at the man in motion for Middletown South and jumped. It is against middle, uh, rather Madison. Berry a little too anxious. And that's been a problem for Madison so far in this game. South going on the long count. Madison being real aggressive and too aggressive would be second down and five and a, say five yards, four for a first. Spartans have jumped off sides several times here in this first half. Second down now and four at the 38 yard line. Quazzo to throw, play action, looking long, it is intercepted. Chris Nugent picks it off over the shoulder at the three-yard line. For Nugent, the 6'1", 180-pound senior, his third interception of the year. Nugent and Walsh back on that play, doing a fantastic job. We'll see it again. Quazzo with a good pass but great coverage by Madison. Here you're gonna see it, two blue jerseys. They don't let the man get behind him. Chris Nugent, senior, 6'1", 180 pound. 180 pounder, he plays defensive back and halfback. And another example of the Spartans forcing turnovers. This is Mike Bowden who spins for a couple of yards. He gets to the five yard line. Pick up of two and a second and eight. Now extracurricular activity. And a penalty marker on the play. It's against Madison Central. And that will move the Spartans half the distance to the goal.
So instead of a pickup of two, it's a loss of two. And second down and 12 coming up. Mike Bowden running hard inside. Brought down by Chris Bova, the outside linebacker. A pickup of about six on the play. Third down and six coming up. An effective play going from the wishbone, faking the handoff right across Buck, handing off to Bowden on the left side. Bowden has the good size to get those hard yards. Ball marked at the eight yard line. Walsh looks to keep, he's brought down at the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of running room coming up. Bova and also on the play, Dave Albrecht, the defensive end. And there's a player down now for Middletown South. Looks to be Dave Albrecht, number 75. Six foot, 190 pound senior. And he seems to be okay as he trots off the field. Hopefully he'll be back later. Now the Spartans though have to punt fourth down and they'll be punting from within their own end zone as the ball is just at the four yard line excuse me at the nine yard line and remember they haven't punted too much this year so let's see if Barry can get it off with the pressure now will Madison will Middletown come they just might Keith Burry looking to kick it out of the end zone good snap no pressure and a good kick by Burry Patella makes the Catch and he has nailed right away. Down on the play, Palavito for Madison Center. Palavito goes one way, usually defense. He's a guy who loves to hit. And he made a nice hit there, and a lot of guts shown by number 13, Critelli. Picking up the snap with a man in his face. All right, Middletown South again with good field position. The Eagles have the football at the Spartan 44. I formation. Quazo gives the pits, and he has cut down at the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard. Eddie Walsh coming up to make the play along with B.J. Veslaki, number 34. South will set up their defense. They'll spread it out a little bit. They use that multiple eye. That time they had twins right side to try and spread out the defensive backs of Madison. But that time, a good job by the inside and the backers. Second down and nine. Madison in a five-man front. Guerrero in motion, Quazo to throw. Now he runs out of the pocket, lets it go. It is incomplete. Intended for Jesse Muscarello, the tight end. But it falls incomplete. Quazo running away from the pressure. Stanovich trying to put the pressure on, but Ron Onmack did a good job blocking Stanovich. He got doubled there, and that allowed the quarterback Quazo to roll out right side and almost complete the pass. It'll be third down and nine. Passing situation, maybe a draw. There's a good look at Jeff Quazo, number 11. Primarily a medium range passer, not the long type passer. And he saw evidence of that earlier when he tried to throw the post pattern, it was picked off. Third down and nine. Here's Quazo. He throws incomplete. Trying to go on the down and out to the tight end, John Jones. That time it looked like the tight end was open, but a little bit overthrown once again. And Jones is back now to kick it. He'll kick it out of there. And it has been a defensive struggle in the first half and pretty much the way we thought it was going to go. Defense telling the story. John's. Jones to kick, excuse me. And it sails out of bounds. Spartans will get the football. They'll have to see where it went out. They are walking way up now from where it seemed to bounce. No matter where it's going to go, we know that Madison will set up once again with the ball in the hole. They set the football down at about the 18 yard line, and that's where Madison Central. We're going offense. The Spartans 
in the second quarter have had success this year. This has been their quarter. They averaged 12.5 points in the second quarter. That's a lot of points in one stanza. However, they have unable to, been unable to get on track here. Mike Bowden hit behind the line of scrimmage. He might have spun forward for a yard or two. Bowden popped there at the line. Good penetration again by the white jerseys. There's Ed Walsh. Well, we mentioned in the pregame that Middletown South is a tough defensive club, and we weren't just whistling Dixie there, were we? No, we were not. They are strong on defense. Second down and nine. Brian Donnelly wide to the left. Walsh in trouble, and he is down behind the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was looking to throw, but Dave Albrecht, number 75, got there first. A loss of a couple, third down and 10. Albrecht's job on the sweep to his side or on the option to his side, as you see that the play is to get Walsh. That is his man, no matter where he goes, stick with him. And that's just what he did. Therefore, he stopped it. Walsh looks to keep, trying to turn the corner. Flips at the last moment. And it will be close to a first down. Chris Nugent takes the pitch, but we'll have to wait and see. You see how well Walsh runs the option. I thought he was going to use his 4-7 speed to get around the corner, but instead he pitched the ball to pick up about five more. It'll be fourth down and five. Let's take a look again. Here you see Walsh in trouble, but always aware of the man to the right side of him. Good pitch. Nugent he pitched that one to Nugent. Excuse me, Scott. Nugent had gone out of bounds before he got near the stick. And so, therefore, it really wasn't close at all. Okay. Ferry to punt again. And a beautiful punt this time by Keith. Cretelli makes the catch, and he takes it straight up the gut. And he's got a good return here. And deep in the Madison Central Territory goes Joe Cretelli. The senior is dangerous. We saw Cretelli almost break one before. A great game this time. The Eagle fans are going wild on the other side. Five minutes, 41 seconds remaining. First half, Madison Central seven, Middletown South six. But the Eagles are threatening. They have the ball at the 26 yard line. Seems to be just a slight delay and the referees are telling both teams to get off the sidelines. Getting a little too close. Eye formation. <laughs> Steven Pitts with a big burst. Nugent saves the touchdown as Pitts is inside the 15. We can take another look at that. That was a delay draw. It looked like Quaza was gonna go back for the pass. And uh, Pitts just went left side, delayed a little bit, was the only back back there. Big hole, and you saw his big, quick, slashing speed. He's only a sophomore, but he's six foot, 185 pounder with good speed. Down to the 13 yard line. First down, 10, Middletown South. Split backs behind Quazo, and twin receivers split out to the right side. Quazo gives off tackle the fullback, Eric Marcus. Picks up just a couple as the Spartans stack it up. Stanovich on the bottom of the pile for Madison Central. Another delay handoff that time, but this time the Spartans read it real well. Clogged it up the middle. Look at this guy. He's got a great seat, huh? Hope they don't kick the field goal. Where is he? He's on the practice field. He's on the practice field goal post. <laughs> it's a prime seat. You can see it's across the way from us. There was a whistle on the play and a marker. So we'll have to wait and see another penalty. A first half filled with penalties. You wouldn't expect that, especially from the Spartans, because they are a team that's been out there for at least a year and a half or two years together. They say no penalty. I don't know, really know what the situation was. Might have been an equipment problem. Here's the Spartan cheerleaders. 
And there's the line of scrimmage. Middletown South comes up second down and 11. Quazo to throw. Pass protection and has a receiver coming over the middle. Stephen Pitts out of the backfield makes the catch and a pretty decent pickup of about five yards. Third down and five. The ball down to the eight yard line. BJ Vislaki on the coverage. We'll take a look at it again. Quazo back to pass. Looks deep, cannot find anyone. Goes underneath the linebackers and they make the hit. Vislaki in a man to man coverage. He has the back out of the backfield. And a timeout has been called on the field. Four minutes and three seconds remaining in the second quarter. Timeout on the field, and we will take a break as well. The score, Madison Central 7, Middletown South 6. Two cameraman, just drop down a little bit. Entering the North Tac through the valley here. We'll go to the CP, contact Nell 7 The United States Air Force offers opportunities for education and training. Training that will put you at the leading edge of today's technology. Find out how you can become part of today's Air Force. See your Air Force recruiter today. Middletown South driving on Madison Central. The Eagles have the football. Down at the Spartan eight yard line. Third down and five coming up. A lot of room on the left side. There's twins left. Quazo brings the Eagles up to the line of scrimmage. I formation. Pitts is the tailback. Quazo rolls left. Now he turns it in, and it is incomplete. Spartan fans thought it might have been intercepted, but it is incomplete. Covering up on the play was Mike Bowden. Good call. Maybe we could take another look at that. Quazo, as we said, can either drop straight back or roll out. Decided to roll out that time. I almost thought he went over the line of scrimmage, Lou. Threw the football. It bounced before it was caught. So it'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down. <laughs> And the Eagles will not kick. Obviously, do not have the faith in the kicking game. So they will go for it. Fourth down, five from the eight yard line. Quazo rolling left, throws, corner, end zone, incomplete. Intended for Critelli, but it falls incomplete. Lot of pressure by Stanovich, just the timing pattern with the end going to the left corner. Ball is just overthrown, thrown out of bounds, so Madison Central will take over. First down and 10. Here, we'll take another look at it. You're going to see Quazo come back. He's going to roll out left, fake handoff. Stanovich in his face just releases the ball in a timing pattern. You can see the ball is out of bounds, almost hits the track. Timeout taken, Madison Central. Three minutes and 54 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Timeout on the field. The score is Madison Central 7, Middletown South 6. December, a month-long gift of sports from ESPN. Here are just a few. All this and more in December, only on ESPN. As we come back to Madison Central, Lou Brogno along with Scott Rikosny. Scott, let me ask you about that play call by Middletown South. And again, we're not trying to second guess, but uh, the situation where the, the Eagles didn't have to go for a touchdown there. There was fourth down and five. Possibly could have went uh, for something just to pick up the five. Could have went for the five-yard gain. Instead, they went for all of it. Maybe they thought they'd take Madison off guard. You know, maybe they thought that the Spartans would think, hey, they were going to try and get the five, but they went for it all, and it didn't work out. Right now, the Spartans are in a hole. They have the football, but they are back at their own eight-yard line. 
and it's been that way for most of the first half for the Spartans. One thing the Spartans have to do, stay away from the penalties. Ed Walsh calls the signals, and he gives to Angelusi. That's the first carry of the game for Tom coming in. 381 yards, 6.2 average. He's a 5'10", 175-pound senior. One thing I must say about Middletown South, for a team that has not faced the wishbone all year, they're doing a great job. They must have had a great practice week. Have to give a lot of credit to Coach John Andel and his staff. His first year at the helm at the Eagles, and he has had an outstanding campaign, assistant coach for many years at Middletown South. They go up the middle. Again, it might have been Angelusi, and it was. Tom picks up a couple, and now Madison faced with a third down and five. Middletown South expected to have a pretty good year this year, according to Coach Andel. But he said they're really happy with what they've done so far. He's proud of the kids. They won their conference. They won the first round, and they're not ready to give up yet. They're going for it all here. Got on the board first, 6 nothing at 7-6 Madison. Under three minutes remaining, second quarter. Third and five at the 13-yard line. Walsh looks to keep. He runs it himself, turns it up, and he did not get enough for the first down. Chris Bova did a great job to stay at home. He kept Walsh to his inside and made the tackle. We'll take a look at it again. Look at number five on the right side of your screen. Watch him shed the blocker. Actually, doesn't get blocked at all and just stays at home. Walsh is his man, makes the play. There you see Ed Walsh, a senior. Looking for number, tw number 18 in a row. This team is on a 17-game winning streak from last year. DeMarcos, the head coach there, also with him. And Coach Andel on the other side. And you see Bob DeMarco there. You know, we talked about Ed Walls running the wishbone and how good he is at it. But you never stop coaching. You never take anything for granted. And even though this is the last game <laughs> for Ed Walsh, Bob DeMarco instructing Ed Walsh, telling him how to read the defense a little bit better. You really have to admire this program here at Madison Central. Win or lose today, they have been very successful. They showed it last year. They came in with one loss, kind of an underdog team. Cinderella team came back and won it all. Keith Perry, another pretty good kick. Critelli picks it up, fumbles. Madison Central, I believe. No, they say Middletown South recovers. Now you can see the style there of Joe Critelli. He will make some really fine returns at times because he catches the ball on the run and takes off. But there you see the danger of doing what he does. He takes some chances, and I guess in that situation, it, it, it almost worked against him. But in the time before, he had a great run. That's his style. Middletown South, of first down and 10 at the Madison Central 43. Two minutes, 15 seconds remaining, first half. Shotgun, Quazzo throws, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it out to Mike Morero, but Keith Burry had the pressure on Quazzo. Mike Morero, the junior, he is six footer, 175 pounds. A lot of juniors on this team. They should be back with another good team next year, but they have a good one right here, right now. Curry gets in there a lot, 11.5 sacks on the year, so Keith has had an outstanding year from his defensive tackle position. Here's a reverse pits, and he goes down. The reason he went down, he wasn't touched, but John Santora, the nose guard, had great penetration. Not only Santora, which caused him to belly out a little bit, but also Stanovich, as you're going to see it coming, number 99, kept the man inside. Back to action, Quazzo rolling out right side, lets it loose, and it is intercepted. Off of Stephen Pitt's hands and picked off by Ed Walsh. That's number four for Ed Walsh this year. And one of the, as we said earlier, the reason for these interceptions by the Spartans because great pressure put on by the Spartan front line. Give them a lot of credit. Here we'll see it again. Tipped and good presence of mind by Walsh playing center field. Comes up with it. And with one minute and 39 seconds and counting down, the Spartans take over. There he is at Walsh, the quarterback. He's a senior. Quazzo had only three interceptions coming into today's game. He has two already. Walsh also will throw. He's rolling out right side. Now he'll keep and he runs out of bounds. So Eddie Walsh takes it out of bounds, stops the clock with 1.23 remaining here in the second quarter. Walsh saw he, saw he couldn't get anything, knew the clock was running down, so he ran it out of bounds, a smart play. 
Ed Walsh mentioned the thousand yard rusher from the quarterback position. Needed nine points to become the county's all time leading scorer. John Henry yeah, Johnson six. holds that. That's true. And 13 points away from the school record, Ken Chanley, back in 1980. And he has six points today. Second down. Over the middle, Donnelly makes the catch and is cut down immediately by Cotelli, but that's enough for a Spartan first down. If we could take another look at that, that is a play that Madison Central has used this year a lot. It's a fake dive or a play action play to the right side. We'll see it again. You're going to see a fake right side just pull up a short pass slanting across the middle is Donnelly to make the catch. Donnelly is 10th catch of the year. First and 10, Walsh looks the pitch. Now he'll keep it. Eddie Walsh comes in the corner. And did he get out of bounds? That's the question. Clock is stopped at 55 seconds. So Walsh did get out of bounds. No, they say wind the clock. And the clock is winding. 53 seconds. And the ball marked at the 43. One thing about the wishbone offense, it's not a big play, a big play offense, but they do have a reverse in here, or a halfback option that they may use. Walsh quickly to Donnelly, incomplete, stops the clock. And, and that was the same pass as before, except to the left side, little slant pattern, faking the dive. Ball a little overthrown, but it does stop the clock. Third down and one. Here you're going to see it again. Left side, Donnelly a little bit overthrown on the tackle. Jim Conway doing a good job so far in pass coverage. 33 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. And timeout taken, Madison Central. Spartans want to talk it over. Bob DeMarco heads out. What do you think, a big play to try and get some more points on the board? We'll keep it right here. I, I would think that uh, Madison Central would try to do something big here. DeMarco just patting Ed Walsh on the back there and obviously didn't like what he saw, Coach DeMarco, on the defensive line, so he signaled for the timeout. That has to be Madison's last timeout of this half. Might as well use it, you know, before the first half runs out. Madison Central has a play that's a reverse halfback option. So that's something in the playbook of DeMarco that he may want to use. I think he's going to go for something here, or else he wouldn't have called the timeout just to sit on the football. 7-6. to six. Middletown South scoring in the first quarter, early in the fourth, first quarter, taking advantage of a Madison Central turnover and carrying the football in was uh, Eric Marcus. And Madison Central coming back after the long pass to Donnelly. Walsh with a six-yard... Touchdown run. Third down one. 33 seconds remaining. Walsh to throw. Now in trouble. Trying to get away, but he'll go down. Albrecht with the big pressure coming from the right side. Walsh dropped straight back. Tried to roll out left, but Albrecht right in his face. Clock continues to run. And you got to really wonder what the Spartans will even do here. 11 seconds. They may not have to snap another, snap the ball. That should do it. Two seconds, one, and that's the half. So a very entertaining first half of football in the Central Jersey Group 4 championship game. Your score at halftime, Madison Central 7, Middletown South 6. Back with second half action in just a few moments. Channel 6, just for you, with Mountain Boulevard Extension. From the world of glamour to the time of life, magazines bring you stories that you need to know about. Mountain Boulevard Extension is the magazine show that brings you the world of your hometown. Subscribe to the best local magazine in town, Mountain Boulevard Extension, every Wednesday and Friday at 9 p.m., only on Channel 6, just for you.
Ice on Ice, a magnificent collection of coolly elegant diamond jewelry that will fire your imagination. The Ice on Ice collection is now available at Walter Bauman Jewelers at those beautiful low Bauman prices. You can buy with confidence at Walter Bauman Jewelers, where quality and value have been a family tradition since 1868. Walter Bauman Jewelers is located in West Orange, Parsippany, East Brunswick, Union, Short Hills, Edison, and North Plainfield. Welcome back to Vince Lombardi Field in Old Bridge, New Jersey. The Middletown South Eagles trailing the Madison Central Spartans by one point, seven to six, as we approach quarter number three. Lou Brogner along with Scott Rakosny and the TKR Cable Sports Crew. The difference in the game so far, missed extra point by Middletown South and Madison Central. Uh, not displaying the type of offense that we've been accustomed to seeing this season. The Spartans have been shut down pretty much by a very solid Middletown South defense. Middletown South has played the option well. They play disciplined, one man taking the back, one man taking the dive back, one man taking the quarterback. Now, Bob DeMarco in his 12th year at Madison Central is one to make good adjustments at halftime. We saw it last year in the Neptune game middle t where uh, Madison came back in the second half and blew out Neptune. One of the big offensive stats in the first half for Madison Central, the fact that the Spartans Leading rusher, quarterback Ed Walsh, 11 carries, zero net yards. And he is the big man. Of course, he has over 900 yards rushing this year. Once you stop Walsh, you're in pretty good shape on defense. Another fact here, Madison Central has scored about a little over 10 points, average 10 points in the first quarter. Their opponents all year have only scored nine points. Today, they've had six points scored against them. All right, Madison Central will kick off, and the Spartans will be kicking right to left on your screen. Brian Donnelly tees the football up at the 40-yard line. Pitts and Cretelli are back deep. It's a roller, and it's taken by Cretelli. No, it gets away from him, picks it up, and is brought down immediately across the 22-yard line. First and 10, Middletown South at the 22. The Eagles offensively up front. Uh, the rock of their offensive line is center Noah Rudolph. Citarella and Onmack are the guards. Smith and Schutz are the tackles. Marrero the split end. John Jones the tight end. Gustafson, Pitts, and Marcus are in the backfield. And Jeff Quazzo, who showed a pretty good arm in the first half at quarterback. Quazzo reads coverage as well. Good looking quarterback. 5'10, 165 pound junior. First and 10. Eagles at the 22, inside handoff, Marcus looking to get outside, and he powers for a couple of yards, drags a couple of Spartan tacklers with him, Calavito over to make the stop for Madison Central, up front for the Spartans, Santora, Berry, Kramer, Hamilton, and Stanovich at the ends, this locky Calavito at the linebackers, Walsh, Donnelly, Nugent, and Bowden in the backfield. Here you're going to see it, there's a hole initially, but strung out well by the Blue Jerseys, and Calavito coming up to make the hit at the end. Gain of about three yards, though. Second down and seven. Here he is, halfback Eric Marcus. Chris Nugent also came over and made the tackle, and out of his safety position, he had 71 tackles coming in. Second down and seven. Just underway, third quarter, Central Jersey Group 4 state championship game. Here is Pitts. He looks to turn it up, and he is brought down at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard or two to the 25-yard line. And again, a penalty marker on the play, and this time it may be against Middletown South. Burry and Santora made the tackle. This is a play that is worth looking at a second time. Stanovich, after we see this call here. And it's a personal foul against Middletown South. Stanovich did a great job at his left end position. He took on John Jones, fought him off. Maybe we could take another look at this one and made the tackle. Picture perfect play for a defensive end. 15 yard penalty. And it really backs the Eagles up. It takes them to their 12-yard line. Third down and 23. That's a big play. Madison Central coming back in the second half, all fired up. Not too bad to start off on defense, coming right out of the shoot in the third quarter. Quazzo gives to Pitts. Penalty marker on the play. Pitts brought down by B.J. Vislaki. 
as he gets to the 15 yard line. A short pickup. It will bring up a fourth down, provided the penalties against Middletown South. Holding against the Eagles. There's been, a, there's been a whole lot of penalties in this game. Madison Central, I think, got most of them in the first half, but right away, the South Eagles coming with two penalties back to back. It'll make it third down and 25 yards to go. Well, they re refuse the penalty. They want the ball. Madison Central wants the football and the Eagles will have to punt for the first time here in the second half. John Jones will kick from the end zone, actually standing at his two. Donnelly and Walsh are back deep for Madison Central. It's a high end over end kick. Walsh takes it, fumbles, and Middletown South may have recovered. Let's see, no indication yet. And Madison. it is Madison's ball. Ed Walsh able to recover somehow, some way, underneath the pile of Eagle players. Let's take another look at it. Here you're going to see the punt. Walsh is going to circle under it. He makes, tries to make the catch anyway. And I think another player came up with the football for Madison. As you saw, Walsh tried to field the ball backpedaling. Madison Central on offense. Ozarni, Tunnel, and Scheffler. Connolly and McNamara up front. Donnelly the split end, Stanovich the tight end. In the wishbone, Bowden, Angelusi, and Nugent behind Ed Walsh. First down, Madison Central at midfield. Walsh to throw on first down, cranks it up, floats it up for Donnelly. Interference will be called against Middletown South. Robert Pitts on the coverage, and Donnelly shaken up. Donnelly shaken up on the play. You're going to see that this is the same play that they tried before on the long catch to Donnelly. He got hit going up for the football. Maybe we could take another look at it. Donnelly is down. He got hit. Pass interference is the call. Let's see it again. You're going to see Donnelly on this pattern will fake the in and go out. The ball thrown a little short. Good coverage there, but a little too aggressive on that, on that defensive try. There's Brian Donnelly, 5'9", 165-pound junior. He is down on the ground right now, and they are attending to him. Two penalties against Middletown South. One is holding, and the other one is pass interference, so Madison Central will have its choice as to which one it'll take. And it is a 15-yard penalty. It will be a first down for the Spartans, but right now the concern is for Brian Donnelly, the split end, who is down on the field. Nine minutes, 30 seconds remaining, and we will take a break. A timeout on the field. Madison Central 7, Middletown South 6. ESPN travels the world to bring you the thrills and excitement of World Cup skiing. From the Alps to the Rockies and beyond, World Cup skiing. Skiing like you've never experienced before. The grace, the speed, the danger. Live on the edge of disaster every week with breathtaking excitement you won't want to miss. Your season pass for World Cup skiing is ESPN. And a positive sign. Brian Donnelly walks off under his own power He'll be on back. the Madison Central sideline. Good to see. Excellent player. And up walking around. First down, Madison Central. At the 36-yard line of Middletown South. Wishbone formation, obviously, for the Spartans. Walsh pitches last moment. Bowden looks to make the t turn and does. Gets away from a tackler. Bowden, a big run here. Mike Bowden inside the 10. Mike Bowden with some good numbers. Six TDs this year, 719 yards. A big gain there. That time, Walsh pitched it out real early. Let's take another look at it. Here you're going to see it. You're going to see nobody's on number 21, Bowden. There should be a man covering him. Good stiff arm there to pick up an extra 25 yards. And there is a penalty on the play, and it will bring Madison Central back. Unfortunately for the Spartans, clipping on the play, and that brings the ball back. Still, it will be enough for a Spartan first down. The clip happened downfield, so you take where the clip occurred and mark it off from there. It's first and 10. The ball resting on about the 35-yard line of 
Middletown South. There you see Brian Donnelly trying to get the cobwebs out, trying to recover and get back in there. First and 10, actually marked at the 24. Walsh pitches outside Nugent, makes the turn, and Nugent now picking up some yardage as he's across the 20-yard line, across the 15, and down near the 10, another Madison Central first down. Now the Spartans beginning to run the option. Middletown South has to take that pitch man. You see Nugent showing his good speed there, had 200-yard games this year, 125 against Colonia and 118 in the playoff game against East Brunswick. All of the backs have had 100-yard games this year. First and 10 at the 12. Walsh keeps himself. Fumble. Middletown, no, no, Madison Central recovers. I think they're going to blow it dead, Luke. And they may blow it dead. Walsh down and the ball popping out. And they do blow it dead. That's a good call, Scott. Ed Walsh down at the seven yard line. And a good pickup. Pickup of six, second down and four. Here we're going to see it again. This time Walsh will take it himself. On the two previous plays, he pitched it. They'd probably be really concerned about the pitch man, so he took it himself. And as you can see, Walsh was down. Good call by the refs. Second down and five. Ball marked at the seven. Eight minutes remaining, third quarter. Madison Central seven, Middletown South six. DeMarco doing a great job adjusting on offense. Walsh looking to keep. Still has the football, turns it in. Touchdown, Madison Central. And that puts Madison Central up. 13 to six, we'll see it again. Here you're gonna see it, Walsh will take it himself from the end zone. Good speed, gets right around, scores the touchdown, and he now sets the Middlesex County scoring record ahead of John Henry Johnson by three points. And the all-time Madison Central scoring record is, as well. Donnelly into Kick the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. A break in the action. Seven minutes, 49 seconds remaining. Third quarter, Madison Central, 14, Middletown South, six. Are you knocking yourself out looking for advertising that works? You've tried almost everything, right? Newspapers, radio, even direct mail, and you're still not getting results, right? Well, cable advertising is the answer. Cable reaches the market and customers your business needs. The channel selection offers you, the advertiser, the media variety to achieve those elusive results. Call TKR Advertising today at 356-1220. We've got the solution. Ryan Donnelly, obviously okay, came in and kicked the extra point to give Madison Central an eight-point lead at 14-6. to six. Now Middletown South is going to have to get on track offensively. They can no longer rely on grounding it out. They're going to have to get it going as they trail by eight as we're halfway through the third quarter. they got to watch the penalties. Came out with two in the beginning of the third quarter. Bounces to Pitts at the 15, to the 20. 25 and upended at the 30 yard line. Rob Stanovich on the tackle. The 6'3, 220 pounder. Did a great job staying in his lane, coming down to make the hit. Want to correct the mistake I made? I said that Madison Central only threw the ball 12 times this year. Well, they completed 12 of 34 coming into the game. So we'll, we'll fix that for you and get it right. All right, Middletown South. We're defeated Manalapin last week, 7 to 6. In trouble here as they trail by eight. A long way to go, but they've got to get on track. Jeff Quazo calls the signals. And on the draw play, Pitts looking to get outside, but Eddie Walsh is over there and drags them down. Hamilton also coming up to help out. Hamilton doing a fine job to make the stop, but Berry came in, made the hit, could not hold on. It would have been a loss on the play in the backfield. Instead, it's second down and 10. Ball moves to the line of scrimmage. Big crowd being treated to an excellent football game here on a nice December afternoon. You see Coach John Andel a bit concerned at this time, his team down by eight. 
pits in motion, Quazo pitches. This is Marcus, Jeff Marcus. This is a good run, but a penalty marker on the play, and actually two penalty markers on the play, and also I called him Jeff Marcus. Eric Marcus carries the football. My apologies for that. This will bring him back, though. And three penalties in the third quarter are really killing Middletown South. Here you're going to see it, Marcus with a few hands on him, but gains a few. You can't really see where the penalties were committed, but it is against, one's against Madison and one is against Middletown South. So they're offsetting and they'll do it again. Yes, they will. Second down and 10. Offsetting penalties, face mask against Madison Central, holding against Middletown South. Second down and 10 at the 30 yard line. Little over six to go in the third quarter. Madison Central on top, 14 to six. And Madison Central came out on offense and did the job. Ran better than they did in the whole first quarter. Quazzo to throw, straight back, in trouble. Stanovich has him and puts him down. Rob Stanovich with 14 and a half sacks this year. Give him 15 and a half. Plays the run and the pass super. Good speed. Maybe we can take another look at that coming from his end position. There you see the Spartan pressure. 37.5 sacks in 10 games, and that's not too bad. Here you're going to see Stanovich coming from the left side. You can see he came inside a little bit of a cross with the tackle and made the hit. 6'3", 220 pounder. He's going places. Third down and two miles for Middletown South. <laughs> Quazzo gives on the delay, and Marcus has a nice run. He rips it off here, but Walsh upends him well short of first down yardage. But they got a little bit of yardage back and some breathing room to get the punt away. Just, just a little draw to pick up a few. We'll take a look at it here. Let's see it give right. Cutting left, Marcus, a slashing runner, hard to bring down. You have to hit him low and wrap your arms. So Jones will be back to punt for Madison, or rather for Middletown South. And momentum now going in the Spartans' direction. Fair catch called for by Ed Walsh, takes it over the shoulder, and the Spartans will have the football. Good field position. Madison Central will start at their own 37. 446 remaining in the third quarter. Spartans lead it 14-6. The Eagles, who have done a good job in the first half in containing the option, must continue that. They've had trouble covering the pitch man. I think part of the problem is good blocking downfield by Madison Central, blocking the cornerback, and the cornerback is the man that must take the pitch man. Walsh looking to turn the corner. Now he'll turn it up and is brought down. A good play by the defensive end, Dave Albrecht, who stood at home and made the tackle. Penalty marker on the play as well. Maybe against Donnelly, I'm not sure. We're going to see it again. Donnelly went and blocked downfield. You're going to see him right there in front of you. Here's the pitch. And good coverage there. You see, there was no man to pitch to because the white jersey came up to make the hit. And this one is going to be against Madison. And they'll mark it off against the Spartans. It's holding against Madison Central. So that backs them up. And a first down now coming up. First down and about 17. On that play, nobody came up to hit the cornerback. Donnelly, who was lined up in the split end on the left side, went and hit the safety. Walsh gives up the middle. Not a lot of yardage there. Looked to be Angelusi on the carry, but we'll have to wait and see. No, it was Bowden. Mike Bowden carried the football. Not much yardage there as uh, Jason Suss stocked it up nicely. Excellent player. 35 tackles coming into this game. Suss and Murray really clogged that up well on the left side. It was a kind of a misdirection. Walsh turned around and gave it left. Second down and 15. Watch either the out and up pass or the one up the middle. Walsh going to the right, turns it upfield. Ed Walsh, good run here. 
as he gets across the 45 to the 46. He'll be short of first down yardage, but a third down and three coming up for the Spartans. Good run, good read by Walsh. Decided to take it himself. What he does is he reads the end. And that time he saw a hole, read it, picked up some yardage. Ed Walsh, over 1,000 yards, 7.5 average, 54-yard run against Piscataway earlier this year, 25 touchdowns. 26, just go 27 on on. touchdowns. 27 today, <laughs> yeah, two today. And those two. Walsh looking to turn it in. He'll be short here, though. This is an excellent defensive play by Middletown South. Dan Murray turned Walsh in, made the tackle, and the Spartans are going to be a buck short. Murray, uh, rather, Walsh looked to turn it up a little too soon. Here you're going to see he turns it up real soon. And on the initial hit was Chris Bova, number five, coming up from his defensive back position. So Middletown South will take over on the punt if they do punt the football. And they should get some pretty good field position. And back, of course, to receive is Joe Cratelli, dangerous with good speed. Yes, we do have a timeout on the field. Coach DeMarco will go out, talk with his troops. Maybe they'll try something tricky. There's about a yard to go for a first down, fourth and one. All right, timeout on the field. There's a break in the action, two minutes and 36 seconds remaining. It's Madison Central, 14, and Middletown South, six. Channel 6, just for you, with Sports Call. Hate the Yankees? Love the Mets? Love the Giants? Hate the Jets? Wherever your sports loyalties lie, your friends are sick of hearing about it. So pick up the phone and call Lou Brogno. Sports Call is the place where sports fans can get their voices heard. So don't forget, Sports Call, live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. only on Channel 6, just for you. There's a look at the Spartans there. And it looks like they're going to go for it, Lou. They're Next. going for it. Fourth down and one. Madison Central will go on fourth and one. Big play here. Walsh, he's not going to get it. He is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. A interesting call by the Spartans because Middletown South gets terrific field position here. Let's take a look at that one again. There is just nothing doing. Jason Suss, the 220-pounder at nose guard, just clogged it up. Murray and Johnson also there. Let's take a look. You're going to see nothing at all. Good penetration. And taking over will be the Eagles as they take over with the ball over the 50-yard line. Eagles with the football at the Madison Central 47. 218 remaining third quarter. They trail by eight. Quazzo gives and falling down was Robert Pitts. Bislocki and Burry, also Santora, making the penetration as Pitts went down. Loss of two. Pitts trying to make the cut. The field is in good condition or, or decent condition, but it's not in great condition, especially up the middle. You have to remember two teams play on this during the year, both Cedar Ridge and Madison Central. Second down and 12. Here's Quazzo to throw. Now he'll roll out, right side. He's gonna run it, throws and complete. Intended, I believe, for John Jones, a tight end, overshot him. Ed Walsh was the closest man to the football. Quazzo almost ran across the line of scrimmage when he let that ball go. I thought that was pretty close. Barrero was also in the area and he was open. Let's take another look. You're gonna see some pressure on the quarterback Quazzo. Here, here you'll see it, coming as Stanovich giving the pressure, rolling out to his left side, Stanovich giving the chase, and there you see Marrero and Jones in the area. Jones is a big target. He's the tight end, six foot four. Third and 12. So far, the Madison Central defense has been outstanding here in the second half. Quazzo lets it go, and a nice catch, but knocked away. Incomplete. And I gotta tell you, B.J. Vislocki, separated the ball from Mike Marrero. Bislocki with the big hit. Marrero making a nice catch to come up. We'll maybe take another look at it. Making a nice catch, could not hold on. Bislocki pounded him. You can hear that hit up here. Well, fourth down and Jones will have to punt. 
There's Marrero. 195 yards this year, three touchdowns. And Madison Central will get the football on the big third down hit by Vislaki. Punt goes out of bounds and Madison Central will take over. And once again, they are in the hole, but they have shown to get out of it, especially in this second half. One minute, 19 seconds remaining in the third quarter, 14 to six, Madison Central leading it. Spartans gambling, going on fourth down at midfield, not making it. However, as it turned out, it didn't hurt them. Walsh looking to keep. Now he pitches Bowden, gets his hands on it, turns it upfield and has a Spartan first down. But I gotta tell you, what an athletic move by Mike Bowden to get his hands on that football. Maybe we could take another look at that one. The man who was supposed to take the pitch man would be John Conway. We'll take a look at it again. Conway is number 21. You're gonna see him right there, go to the middle and slip. And he had to play man-to-man -man defense and Bowden brought down and there is a penalty on the play, and it will go against Madison. Number number of uh, penalty markers here in this game. More than we had expected to see, to be quite honest. A loss of uh, seven yards on the penalty. It's taken from the point of infraction. And a first down and 17 coming up for Madison Central. With man-to-man -man defense, that will cause you to take yourself out of the play. You're going to see number 21 in your screen right there. That's Conway. He has to cover Donnelly if he goes across. Therefore, it takes him out of the play to get the pitch man coming to the left side. Walsh over the middle. Stanovich makes the catch. Big Rob Stanovich close to a Madison Central first down. Signs of Mark Bavaro on that. That's his fourth reception of the year. For he had, came in with three receptions for 118 yards and two TDs. That's not too bad. <laughs> That's uh, what you call getting the most out of your catches, 118 yards on three receptions. He has two touchdown receptions, 39.3 average. Stanovich would be an excellent tight end prospect, except that he plays on a team that doesn't throw much. So most colleges looking at him as a defensive player. Walsh in trouble, dragged down behind the, the line of scrimmage. Good play, Chuck Decker from coming in from his outside linebacker position. And with three seconds remaining in the quarter, that'll be the last play of the third quarter. And that'll do it. We have played three quarters in the state championship game. The score, Madison Central 14, Middletown South 6. Welcome back to Vince Lombardi Field in Old Bridge. Second year in a row that this field has hosted the Central Jersey Group 4 State Championship game. Last year, Madison Central defeating Neptune to win the title. This year, taking on another short team, Middletown South. Right now, Spartans have the best of it. Future Spartan there, I would guess. <laughs> 14 to six, the score. Madison Central getting their touchdowns via the ground. Two rushing touchdowns by Ed Walsh. Middletown South scoring early. They led 6-0, but Madison Central has come back to score 14 unanswered points. Great adjustment by Coach DeMarco at the half. They came out, were fired up on defense, got the ball, and scored on their first possession. Third down four for the Spartans. Ball to 24. Walsh looks to turn the corner. Pitches outside. Bowden, good defensive play. An outstanding defensive play. Coming up to make the tackle. Looked to be Quazzo, number 11, playing defense. Might have been Jim Conway. Let's take another look at it. You're going to see number five, Bova, come across the line. And he forces it back. And then in on the play. Hard to see that number. It looked like Quazzo, number 11. That's an excellent defensive play. Key defensive play. Keith Burry with a booming punt, a beautiful kick that will sail out of bounds. Middletown South will have pretty good field position, though, near midfield. They'll mark it at the Middletown South 42-yard line. Keep in mind that missed extra point early on in the game. 
should Middletown South score another touchdown, they would have to go for a two-point conversion to tie it up. There's a closer look. Little lollipop there. First and 10 for the Eagles at the 42. Quazzo to throw, tipped at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Stephen Hamilton got his paws on it. That was intended for Marrero. And there's some good patterns. I like the patterns they're running. They're not going long right now. They're going with the short button hook patterns at about six, seven yards. That time, if the pass wasn't tipped, it would have been complete. But instead, it's second down and 10. Just underway, fourth quarter. Keep in mind, this game cannot end in a tie which is what we were alluding to. Should uh, Middletown South tie it, we will play overtime. Second down, 10. Pitts in motion. Quazo gives and not much room. Eric Marcus carries the football, but he's brought down by Santora behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of a yard, third down and 11. Going with the delay that time, the Eagles just haven't been able to get it together on offense. Either that or Madison Central has been able to get it together because right now they're on top and having trouble moving the ball of the Eagles. There you see the band here at Madison Central. Starting to feel, hopefully for them, another championship. A lot of movement on that Eagle offense. Quazzo to throw, and it's knocked away by Santora. Big play by John Santora, the nose guard. Santora, six footer, 210 pound senior. Coming in, playing a good game on defense. He only plays one way. And you see some of the happy fans here at Madison. We'll take another look at it. You're gonna see Santora coming in from the right side of your screen. And they're gonna punt the ball. Jones punts it away and the Spartans will stay away from it. Ball rolls dead at the 23 yard line. So Madison Central goes on offense. Spartans looking to control the ball, I would think here, Scott. Yeah, they're not gonna try anything too fancy. They just wanna keep the ball in their possession and make sure that the offense, quick strike capability offense, of the Eagles don't get the ball back. They're ahead by eight, so they got one touchdown to play with. There's plenty of time left in the fourth quarter, though. Ten minutes. Walsh pitches. Here's an option pass. Nugent has a receiver. Donnelly makes the catch. And struck down. Deep in Middletown South Territory. That's the option pass I was talking about. That wasn't the, the reverse. As you see Donnelly down, maybe we could take another look at that one. And that time, Critelli, who was playing cornerback, was forced to make a decision. He had to either stay with his man, who was Donnelly, or come up and hit the halfback. He came up and that left Donnelly open. And there you see Donnelly with another reception this year. It's the second one, second time he's been popped like that. And. Donnelly, they're working on his leg. Hopefully, again, he'll be all right. Donnelly, a big play receiver, and when he catches the football, it's usually for big chunks of yardage. Averaging over 27 yards a catch. And more than likely, he will be the wishbone quarterback for Madison Central next year. So you look at him as a receiver this year, but next year he'll probably, probably be running the offense. Yes, he is a junior, has one more year to go here at Madison. First and 10. Ball marked at the 26-yard line. 9.45 remaining. Walsh up the middle. Angelusi pounds ahead for two or three. Chuck Decker on the tackle. Came in with 54 tackles on the year. That's something we haven't seen too much this afternoon, the give to Angelusi. That ball is right up the middle. Just a little hole. And Angelusi stays low to the ground. Picks up about four and a half. Pick up a four, second down, six. Walsh keeps the football, pitches outside, Bowden fumbles. Middletown South has recovered. So a big turnover as the Spartans put the ball on the ground. Conway comes up with the turnover from his cornerback position. Came up, was supposed to have the pitch man. Maybe we can take another look at that one. 
Walsh forced to pitch it. Wasn't exactly on the money with that one. I guess we're going to keep it here. First down and 10 for Middletown South. At the 25 yard line. Marcus in motion, but they give it to Pitts off tackle. And Stephen Pitts has two or three up to the 27. Second and eight. A big turnover for Madison Central because the Spartans were driving for what appeared to be another score, which really would have put them in excellent position. Instead, the Eagles take over. Second down and seven. Defense has to rise one more time. Second and seven. And the give again. It's Pitts. Berry and Calavito on the hit. Delay given to the right side. Pitts stopped for no gain. Third and seven it remains. Third down seven. Seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. 14 to six. Madison Central. Madison Central, our number one team in our Channel 6 poll. Currently ranked number two in the Star Ledger top 20 state poll. Quazzo throws, has Pitts, makes the catch at the first down. He gets away, he's still on his feet, and he's got good yardage. Steven Pitts across midfield. A dangerous runner once he gets the football. Made a nice catch, showed some great balance, tight roped on the right side. Good time for Quazo. Straight drop back. Here you're gonna see it again. Quazo dropping straight back. Looking up the middle, then looks right side. He looked off the defenders and a good job to run the ball and stay inbounds. Pitts gets the first down and more. First and 10 at midfield, Marcus looks to get outside, he will not. Spartans will drop him for a loss. Palavito coming in to make the play, along with Veslaki. Veslaki and Hamilton hit. Hamilton hit him low, Veslaki hit him high for no gain. Call it a loss of one, second down and 11. So you see a shot of some of the Madison cheerleaders and they're all dressed in their dark and light blue. It's a good two dozen out there today. Time is winding down. Six minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. 14-6. Second down, 11. At the 49-yard line of Middletown South. Quazzo gives up the middle. This is Pitts. A good run. He rips it across the 45 down to the 43 of Madison Central. He'll be short of first down yardage. But a good pickup. And third down and short coming up. Pitts knows how to find the holes, has his eyes open, comes in with over 900 yards this year. And you're going to see the slashing run here to the right side off tackle, just squirms through. Hard to tackle, finally brought down by Walsh and Veslaki. Excellent runner, only a sophomore. He has a bright future in the short conference. Third down and two. Quazzo gives, but hit behind the line of scrimmage, a fumble. Madison Central has recovered. Calavito on top of the football. But I'm not sure that Steve made the hit. Maybe it was Hamilton on the football. Let's see. Let's see if we can see it. You'll see left side coming into blue jerseys. A lot of people in there. It looked like Barry was one of the men who hit him. Burry, I couldn't see the other jersey. Could have been Barry or Stanovich who made the hit. And then Calavito and Hamilton get into the football. A big, big turnover. And we mentioned Madison Central wins because they forced turnovers. A plus 23 turnover ratio this year. Penalty markers on the play. That is a, a big part of football. Most coaches will tell you, Scott, that one of the reasons why teams win or lose, if you will, is turnovers. If you turn the ball over a lot, most times you're not going to be on the winning side of the score. 
And when you get a lot of turnovers, well, you're going to win a lot of games. And that's Madison Central's story. One of the reasons why they're 10-0 and this year and have won 17 in a row. They hit real hard. They have good pressure on the quarterbacks, the opposing quarterbacks, and come up with the interceptions. Coming in with 15 into the game, have two today. First and 15, Angelusi pounding ahead and brought down across the 45-yard line. A good pickup, pickup of five, second down 10. There you see Rob Stanovich having a real good game at defensive end and also has a catch at his tight end position. Now is Angelusi time. They want to run out the clock, grind it up the middle, and he's the man you want to give it to. Four and a half remaining, fourth quarter. Spartans looking to work some clock here. Angelucci, good run, and he crawls down to midfield. He's a tough runner. We saw him last year on one of the coldest days of the year against East Brunswick in the playoffs with no sleeves on those arms. It was very cold and it ran all day like you just saw there. Right up the middle, low to the ground, fighting for every yard. And Tom very rarely puts the football on the ground, so that's what Bob DeMarco's thinking is here. Keep the ball in Angelucci's arms. You don't want to be pitching the ball all over the place. Grind out some yardage, use some clock, and keep the football. Hold on to the ball with two hands. Third down, five. Walsh throws to Stanovich. <laughs> Took us by surprise. It's a play action, a little fake, pop pass left side, a little bit underthrown. Stanovich couldn't come up with it. Would have be been a first down, down had he caught it. Yeah, he was. He had the five yards needed. Fourth and five, Burry will punt. Keith Burry in the game. Clock stopped at three minutes and 49 seconds. We see a shot of Stanovich. Burry back to kick, and he's had a good game kicking the ball, getting a nice spiral, kicking it well. And this time a short one, and it hits a Madison man, Stanovich, so the ball will be down at that point. Snuck up on Spartans will go on defense one more time. 3.41 remaining fourth quarter, 14-6 the score. Ball is marked at the 24. You hear the big cheer from the crowd. Matawan has defeated Franklin Township in the Central Jersey Group 3 Championship. And the reason why they're happy is because, as far as the star ledger goes, Madison Central may move from the number two to the number one spot if Franklin, because of the Franklin loss, they can hold on here. The that cheerleaders would, are happy. That would be for the uh, star ledger right. poll in the top 20, which would give Madison Central the star ledger trophy. But I'll tell you, there's a team that plays in the short conference and they're called the Manawan Huskies, and they may stake them some claim to that uh, state championship trophy. Quazzo throws, intercepted. Donnelly picks it off. That, that could about seal it up. Donnelly, who's been popped twice, slow getting up on the end position, makes a nice recovery and Madison will take over with 314 remaining. For Brian Donnelly, his fourth interception of the year. And now with three minutes remaining and the wall marked at the 30 yard line, the Spartans will look to grind it out and claim their second consecutive state championship. That doesn't happen too often, especially at this level. How many teams can claim that? Walsh looking to run the option, keeps it himself. Eddie Walsh out of bounds inside the 10. Big gainer by Walsh. Walsh doing the smart thing. Could have pitched it, but didn't. Kept the ball, doesn't want to take any chances of turning it over. A great gain, first and 10. 2.42 left to go in the game. It's first and goal at the five. Spartans looking not only to keep possession of the ball, but hammer the final na nail into Middletown South coffin. Walsh keeps, looks to turn it in. He fumbles. 
touchdown recovered by the Spartans. And it's not official yet, but after that touchdown, I think the icing's on the cake. Walsh low to get up. I didn't, he got popped. I didn't see who recovered the fumble. Looked like Chris Nugent on top of the ball, and Nugent will get credit for the touchdown. Could be Nugent or Mann. They were both in the air. You're going to see the ball squirt out, and you can't see it from here. Ed Walsh, the quarterback, fumbles. It looks like Nugent may have come up with it, but Mann was also in the area, and what a way to score. 2.16 left to go, and it's pretty close to over now. Ed Walsh is shaking up on the sidelines. Hoping, hopefully Eddie's all right. Donnelly's kick is no good. And a timeout on the field. Two minutes, 16 seconds remaining, fourth quarter. They begin to celebrate in Old Bridge. Madison Central 20, Middletown South 6. Ever yeah, tried watching down. every right. NFL game? Well, Miss anything? Well, someday see all the key plays from every game on ESPN's NFL Primetime. Week after week, NFL Primetime is football's fastest hour. With Chris Berman, Pete Axfeld, and Tom Jackson. See it all in one place. NFL Primetime. Sunday night, just before NFL Sunday Night Football on ESPN. The Spartans will be kicking off from left to right. They lead it 20 to 6 with 2 minutes and 16 seconds remaining. It'll be their 18th consecutive win. They will finish the season undefeated at 11 and 0 and their second straight Central New Jersey State Championship. The ball is loose. Madison Central has recovered. And when it rains, it pours. Offensive lineman Brian McNamara comes up with it, raises the ball high. Madison Central will go 11-0, the best record in their school's history. You're going to see an onside kick. Donnelly just punches it, hits the top of the football. You're going to see it here. Goes past the white jerseys and coming up with the football, Madison Central. And they're starting to celebrate here in Old Bridge. For our viewers who don't watch football that often, you may ask, why would Madison Central onside kick here? Well, they weren't doing it to get possession of the ball. They just didn't want to run back. That's right. why they were keeping it on the ground. As it turned out, uh, it turned out very well for the Spartans. Walsh gives to Angelucci. A big gainer. Wind him up down. and watch him go. Mike or Tom Angelucci. Right up the middle. It's, it's his time of the game. Right up the middle. Straight ahead runner with some pretty good speed. Quick feet. One minute and 40 seconds remaining. Well, Middletown South has a lot of young players remaining on their team next year. This is a ball club that has a very stingy defense. They will be back next year. And head coach John Andel in his first season has done an excellent job. He was pleased before coming into the game, and he has to be pleased with his team's effort. They played a great first half. Surprised me. They've shut off Madison Central in the first half like no other team has this year. They will finish at 9-2, which is an excellent record, obviously. As they measure for the first down, I believe the Spartans are just a little bit short. For Madison Central, another state championship. They probably, as we mentioned, will be crowned the number one team in the state of New Jersey by the Star-Ledger in their top 20 poll. Although, as we also mentioned, Madawan certainly has a claim to that top spot. Madawan has a heck of a team. Craig Mitter, a great back. A lot of other good players over on that team. They have a tough defense, and they beat Franklin today, which hasn't been done in 21 games. Our Spartan, the Spartans, Madison Central Spartans, will be the number one team in our poll. And they have calling them our year. Spartans. Let's say our poll will have Madison Central the number one team. Of course, over in that Madawan Franklin game, Len Rivers closes his high school career at Franklin to move on to the New Jersey Nets. A nice guy and a great coach. 
Take a good look at the Madison Central wishbone offense here, folks, as Middletown South calls a timeout. And with the timeout, we too will take a timeout. One minute and 10 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter as the celebration has begun. Middletown South trailing Madison Central by the score of 20 to 6. And we call As we come back to Vince Lombardi Field, those Old Bridge fans out there or any of the Madison Central fans, take a look at this Madison Central offense here. As they run the wishbone offense, it'll be the last time you'll see them collectively as a unit. Angelucci, Bowden, and Nugent behind Ed Walsh, all seniors in the backfield up front. Tanya, Shepler, Connolly, McNamara, and Stanovich also all seniors. And they go out, obviously, on an outstanding note. Crowd whooping it up. They feel like it, it's been over for a long time. That's another first down for Madison Central. There's one minute remaining. And there you see some of the cheerleaders that have been cheering on this team all year. And they're a happy group. Two in a row for Madison Central. The Spartans, surely, if not the best, one of the best in New Jersey. Defensively for Madison Central, some of the players who uh, also played their last game, Stephen Hamilton, fine defensive end. Keith Berry had an outstanding season. John Santora, Ken Kramer, Kyle Vito, uh, B.J. Vislaki. As you can see, it's a senior-oriented team. Last year as juniors, uh, this team won the uh, state championship. This year they swept uh, through the regular season undefeated. And the cheers are for Bob DeMarco. He's out of the Madison field. Central coach who raises his fist in the air. You didn't see him there, but as he was coming off the field, he's got to be feeling very good about things. Walsh keeps the football, and he pitches. It's fumbled, but picked up by Bowden. He's it goes out of bounds inside the five-yard line. And that is the story of this team. They never give up. Bowden is shaken up. Hopefully he'll be all right. Mike Bowden shaken up inside the five-yard line. You don't want to see that with just 52 seconds remaining in the game. Starting to get up now. You didn't get a shot of DeMarco, but he is soaked with some water or something. There you see the pitch bounces, and, and Bowden comes up with it. Bowden hopping off the field. Bob DeMarco out looking at uh, his running back, checking him out. You know, we talk about a team that wins all the time, and the criteria for a state champion is wins and losses. But Madison Central also is a ball club that is well coached, displays a lot of class, and uh, it just is a very well-drilled football team. And yes, they win, uh, but they play with pride and they play with class. And I think that's a very important virtue for a high school football team. And you got to head into the coaches of Madison. They've done a fine job with this team. And Middletown South, on the other hand, nothing to be ashamed of. Coach Andel in his first year, who would have expected this team to do so well? And they have so many young players. The backfield is juniors and seniors. Eddie Walsh looking to turn the corner, pitches to Nugent. Touchdown, Madison Central. You can only contain Madison for so long. And Coach DeMarco giving his seniors a chance to run it again. We'll take a look. Here you see, waiting to the last possible minute, Walsh. And there's a penalty on the play. We'll bring that the Madison team back. Will not count. Penalty marker against Madison Central. And that touchdown will not count. <laughs> the Spartan fans don't like it. So wipe those points off the board. 43 seconds remaining. 
just waiting for the inevitable to happen here. We have mentioned just about everything we can. Up the middle, not much yardage. And the cheerleaders trying to do some kind of a formation here. <laughs> I think it says Madison There's Central. There's the cheerleaders. There you go, there Madison are. Central, MCHS number one in 1988. And she's a long way up. Our cameraman, Renardo Mack over there getting that one. And if you watch this game from the beginning, you had a bit of a surprise. Middletown South scored for six nothing. 10 seconds and that'll do it. Congratulations to Bob DeMarco and the Madison Central Spartans. They are the Central Jersey Group Four state champs. As they take the field in celebration. What can you say about a team that goes 11-0, has won 18 straight, and two consecutive state championships? Just a terrific, a terrific story here in Old Bridge. Next year, Coach <laughs> DeMarco has his work cut out for him. He uh, has a lot of seniors on this squad, and it'll probably be basically a whole new squad next year. But a great job in two years, some real good athletes and we congratulate Madison Central. All right, a good ball game here in Old Bridge. We want to thank you very much at home for joining us. Once again, congratulations to Madison Central. And Scott, I want to thank you uh, for all your help this year. Pleasure working with you. Same here. Uh, our director, Doug Gist, who has done an outstanding job this year in both college and high school football games and everyone associated uh, with the TKR uh, sports productions this year who have done an outstanding job. Look at the credits. Those are the people who worked so hard throughout the season. For Scott Rakosny and the rest of the TKR Cable Sports crew, I'm Lou Brogno. Thank you very much for joining us. Once again, the final score, Madison Central 20, Middletown South 6.